denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. The five stages of grief. I'd like to propose that these five stages of grief are a good fit for the progression of a kind of religious psyche over the last 2,000 years or so, and finding itself, and even God, lacking in any substance or truth. Um, the split of Judaism into Christianity uh, signaled the beginning of the first stage of denial in which two monotheistic religions laid an exclusive claim to the same God, denying that the other's claim of righteousness, legitimacy, and exclusivity, uh, and it continued and got more intense a few hundred years later when, uh, well, with the advent of Islam. The denial stage of finding that religion isn't true happened rather quickly, and gave way to the most recent and ongoing stage of religious grief, which is anger. The denial stage happened very quickly because of the exclusivity claims by one faith over another led directly to anger between the faiths. Thus, they have bred conflict. Uh, and even still, uh, war, terror, bigotry, pain, and fear have been a large part of religion's currency for virtually its entire history, but I'd have to say that it's only in the last 2,000 years that the use of this currency uh, could be considered a stage of grief. But now that we've reached the modern age, we're beginning to progress into the next stage, which is bargaining. We're just in the infancy of this, obviously. Um, but there are two things driving this change. The first is the forward progress of science and the ever-growing power it places in the hands of man. We can no longer afford to remain in the anger phase because the currency, spending the currency of religion uh, can lead to The Lord wanted me to shoot the abortionist. Before God and the entire world right now I say you are doing God's own work. <laughs> The second reason we're moving into the bargaining stage is because we're beginning to rise above religious influence, uh, partially because of the obvious aforementioned reasons, uh, and partially because we're finding that we don't need to use religion at all, let alone its currency, to get people to be well, good people. Contrary to religious claims, not only can people be good without religion or religious influence, but the light being shined on religion itself is finding it lacking. A study published in the Journal of Religion and Society in 2005 showed that there was a clear correlation between higher levels of belief in and worship of a creator, and higher rates of STD infections, abortions, divorce, teen pregnancy, decreased science education and education overall, and even homicide. This study is a far cry from showing that religion is causing these problems, because it only shows 
that higher levels of religious affiliation per capita can be used as an indicator to predict where higher levels of social ills can be found. And dare I say vice versa. But the implications are clear. Religion cannot claim moral high ground or the greater good with impunity in the face of this clear correlation. And thus, it loses a portion of its legitimate power, if not all of it. The fact that we're entering the bargaining stage becomes very apparent to me when the main and best defense against such condemning evidence uh, comes in the form of pointing out widespread philanthropic activities of religious organizations. As I've attempted to point out in one of my previous videos, uh, pointing out the good or evil in religion does not negate the evil or good that are done in that religion's God's name. Rather, it shows that God and or religion cannot be the source of morality and goodness. The same applies in the instance of social ill and social good. And really, I think there's direct evidence for this, and I might even be able to generate direct evidence for the fact that we're in the bargaining stage. The Archdiocese of Washington, D.C., a man who claims with all the legitimacy that can be bestowed on someone to represent Abraham's God on this earth without, well, being Pope, very recently threatened to end all contracts with the city to provide social services to the poor, hungry, and needy of the city if the city council voted to legalize gay marriage. In other words, it was a sacrifice of philanthropy on the altar of bigotry to the god of Christian political influence. Now, tell you what, if you think that the Archdiocese did the correct and moral thing and can support, and, and, and you can support it, post your bargain, I mean your argument, in the comment section below. I know, thank you too.